So I'm going to finish up with just some thoughts about how thinking vitalistically would also change the way we assess patients and we approach helping them with problems. Now, these are very general, you know, if we're going to actually come up with some kind of operational system, which I've heard operational systems come out of the different disciplines. Chiropractic has some very specific ideas about how to do this. So these are only general principles, because I'm talking about <coughs> basic principles of any vitalistic assessment. Faster does not necessarily equal better. I know you can take Tylenol and it'll take your headache away in 37 minutes, but if you take Bufferin, it'll be 36 minutes and that's better. I've heard that Neosporin makes my cuts heal faster and that's better. But in fact, the body heals itself in its own time frame and sometimes if we're vitalists, we're going to have to ask ourselves, is that time frame a better time frame than my impatience would be? Maybe so. We have to challenge that assumption when we're assessing people and their responses to their problems. Average is not equal normal. I heard it from several of you quoted uh, uh, the French medical vitalist who said, there's a difference between normative and normal. And he was using the term normal when he said that to mean average. That a living thing, if it's truly a vital organism, actually sets its own norms consequence of making the assumption that there's a wisdom to the whole body that's actually determining what's happening in it and solving its problems itself. Normal doesn't mean average. If my body needs to cook along at 103 and I don't like it, as long as I know I'm working as best I can, because it's impossible that 103 is exactly the temperature I need to be working at at that time. Yeah, so quit trying to tell me why I have to bring my temperature down. Tell me how I can best accomplish the temperature I need to function at to do whatever healing my body has the wisdom to do. One of a thousand examples of where we confuse normal for averages when we start to set sociological rather than vitalistic standards of function. Vitalism says the standards come from within. You have the wisdom to set the parameters of your own living. Adaptation does not equal malfunction. You know, when I eat that bad shrimp, I want to throw up. Uh -huh. I want my body to be clever enough to throw up. But that means I have to respect that my body is clever enough to know in adapting when it needs to do things even if I don't like them. We often confuse adaptations, especially adaptations in challenging situations, to body malfunction. Oh, that's a bad function. And times a thousand examples. Actually, to have a vitalistic healthcare system, we'd have to pretty much systematically take that primary assumption and apply it to everything we think about what we think about how the body functions. We'd have to review our scientific knowledge, not to find out what's right and what's wrong, but to reevaluate, to reevaluate our scientific understanding of how the body works in light of the belief that it has the wisdom to know how it should be working, unless something gets in the way. Understanding also does not equal control. That's probably one of the biggest crimes we commit. When we figure out how to do something, we decide that means we can do it and should do it. Doesn't mean there aren't situations in which you can't take control of someone else's life to help them. But we kind of work from that little monkey brain place that says, if I can figure out how to do it, I want to try it on someone. <laughs> Don't we? Do we? Yes. No. I think we do. Very dangerous. Vitalistically, it's, vitalistically, it's an offense. It is. I'm, I'm going to take it real personally. If you really think you need to take over what my body wants to do just because you can, you better give me better reasons for that. Kind of makes the patient responsible for their own health. There's the 800 pound gorilla that several of us have also uh, referenced, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Patients can't withdraw from the doctor patient relationship. Here, do with me what you will, Doc. Not if you're thinking vitalistically. I, as a vitalistic health 
health care provider won't let a patient do that because that's a lie. I can't take, nor do I have the capacity or power to control their body to heal it. So quit trying to tell me that's my job. And quit trying to make it your job. Doesn't mean you don't have a role to play, by the way. I don't think this is going to reduce health care. As a matter of fact, I think this would actually expand health care and prioritize health care towards helping people create health. Great work. What was it? Cell mutagenesis? <coughs> yeah, it was Latin and Greek, but I still like it. A couple of basic principles of any vitalistic interaction. Principle number one, what is it vitalism? Vitalism is acknowledgement that the patient's own body is the healer. I think of that every time someone proposes to do something for me, I propose to do something for someone else. I think of that as a teacher. I'm a vitalistic teacher, which means you know what I think? I think students are their own learners. I might be able to help, and I appreciate the opportunity. But I don't fool myself for a second that I'm stuffing anything in anyone's brain. If I'm lucky, they'll let it come in and do with it what they will. That's a vitalistic perspective on teaching, because my first acknowledgement is that the person is their own learner. Not just about healing, although we're talking to healthcare providers, so I'll keep it there for a little while. Encourage the patient to let his or her own body heal itself. Do you think we have to get patients' lack of confidence in their own innate intelligence out of the way? Do you think the best thing you might be able to do is give a patient the gift of the knowledge that their own body has this super wisdom that Lewis Thomas talks about? One of the most powerful things you can give to a patient is a recognition of their own body's fundamental wisdom. Why are we so afraid to do that? Because we won't be able to charge $2 trillion to move them. I don't know why. Because people are, don't want to hear that. When they're hurting, people often don't want to hear that. Right? It, it's the parental thing. You know, remember as children. But as children, sometimes the environment goes beyond our ability to deal with it. So we say, help me, daddy. Help me, mommy. But that's not really the way mature organisms live. First of all, mature organisms say, it's my job to do it. I have to heal myself. I gotta stay out in front of that car. Right? Can't idiot proof the world. Help remove any interference. This is the second great shift. We stop thinking of what we can do for or to the person, and we start thinking of what can we get out of the way. Now I'm real fond of this one. Do you know why? It's chiropractic is a profession that concerns itself with removing an interference to this fundamental thing. It's that simple. Chiropractics try to take on other therapeutic things, and I'm sure there's lots of chiropractic. Don't need to step on any of its toes. We do this, that, and the other thing. But the fundamental chiropractic act that D.D. Palmer discovered in 1895 and has been elaborated by chiropractors for 113 years since then, going on in 14, <laughs> is that what we think we're doing. It could be wrong, because it's just our little brain mind. Is adjusting people so there's less interference the function of the nerve system. What's the function of the nerve system? Oh, I just latched into chiropractic, didn't I? Yeah, that's right. To let the body's innate intelligence express itself completely and thoroughly. Someone said they have to have a, a young nerve system. I love that. I want my nerve system to be young until the day I die. Because it's right there at the center of my body's innate intelligence running. But is my nerve system running me? No, that's not a vitalistic way to understand the body. Because corpses have nerve systems. But is the consciousness of life within me operating over and through my nerve system running me? Yeah, exactly. That's what I think is going on. So, chiropractic is all about removing that spe special interference. What's your healthcare system all about removing what interference? Maybe not. Maybe yours is, I'm going to add this, I'm going to take away that. Remove an interference. Basic principle of a vitalistic perspective is that when we remove an interference, the body Provide resources and support for the patient's body to heal itself. Yes? No? Yes? That's something we do quite often. A farmer can be a healthcare provider who just gives you some good food. Right? Because with good food, what can the body do? Build itself, you know? Even Wonder Bread claims it builds strong bodies 12 ways. We're trying to be healthcare providers. You can question whether Wonder Bread's good food or not. 
But if Wonder Bread does build health body qualities, it's not really the Wonder Bread, it's the body's own mysteries. Let's get real vitamins. Resist the temptation to take control of it, patronize the patient. Evaluate all aspects of any therapeutic approach for its outside-in assumptions and reverse them. Doesn't mean we have to do that. I mean, conceptually, just think about it. If I'm saying I have to take control of the body and do this to it, what would happen if I just reversed that assumption? What would happen if I let the body do what it seems to be wanting to do? Think about therapy therapy. And you know, this is the slogan of vitalism. If you think about it. And look, at here's Rob trying to tell me, yeah, it's time to quit Coke. And that's my last slide. <laughs> <laughs>